care. How is everyone doing? Let me see the first person that is actually gonna tune in here. Because, um, it's just a lot going on, though. It's just a lot going on. Hopefully, I'm able to come on here. Because I was trying to do live at, um, I was trying to do live with the audio, but I wouldn't just come on. Like, it wouldn't come on for me to do the live on the audio. Like, I wanted to just come live on audio, but it wouldn't come for me. Like, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, the phone just shut down. The phone just shut down on me. And um, I wasn't able to actually do the audio. Just a moment for me. I'm going to, trying to get the phone on charge. So it doesn't go off on me. I'm trying to get the phone on charge. So it doesn't go off on me. God bless us. God bless us. God bless us. If you're just tuning in, please go ahead and share for me. Go ahead and share for me. How is everyone doing? I just briefly want to say something. Like, you know, sometimes you don't really want to come live or sometimes you don't really feel like coming live, right? But you have the leading in your spirit to just come live and, and say something. You have the leading in your spirit to just come live and say something. So go ahead and share, go ahead and share, go ahead and share for other people to join. I'm actually using my other phone, so I don't have any phone with me to share. So please, go ahead and share. You are too late. Okay, God bless us. So go ahead and share, go ahead and share, go ahead and share, go ahead and share. Let other people tune in. I have something very important that I'm going to say. Hi, Sonia. God bless you. Uh, Romy, God bless you. Robert, God bless you. Albert, God bless you. Agu, God bless you. Please make sure you are reacting to the broadcast. Gladys, God bless you. Menatu, God bless you. So please share for other people to tune in. Watching from Syria alone, God bless you, only girl. Share for the people in Syria alone. Every rose, God bless you, sweetheart. Um, um, who is this? Um, what? Let me see this one. Okay, God bless us. God bless us. Obi, God bless you. SP, God bless you. Onye Maurice, God bless you. Wherever you are tuning in from, God, God bless you. You, you, you. God, God bless you. You, you, you. I hope I am audible enough and I hope people can see me and I hope people can hear me. Yes, God bless us. Today I am coming to speak on the topic that says the power of tongue. The power of tongue the power in the tongue the same tongue you use to kiss this same tongue you use to fornicate this same tongue you use for sucking this same tongue you use for eating this same tongue you use for licking the power in the tongue the power in this tongue the tongue can make you the tongue can destroy you Today, I am coming to speak on the topic that says the power of tongue. God bless you, Ike. God bless you, Muya. Everybody says, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. But I come live every day. So I don't understand when you people come live and then you are missing me. Please make sure that you are engaging on the broadcast. Make sure you are reacting to the broadcast. The power that is in the tongue. The Bible makes us to understand something that we should be fast to see, but we should be slow to speak. Do you know that the tongue has destroyed so many homes? The tongue has destroyed so many marriages. The tongue has destroyed so many relationships. The song has destroyed so many churches. The tongue has, re has restored so many homes. The power of tongue. Come on, somebody, help me and share this broadcast. If you have been coming on the broadcast and you don't share broadcast, I want you to help me to share this one. 
Probably it is going to help your wife. Probably it is going to help your children. Probably it is going to help an uncle. Probably it is going to help somebody that talks too much. 80 people is not enough for God. Just keep sharing for more people to be rich. I am talking about the power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. To build, to destroy is in the power of this tongue. You use your tongue to praise people. You use your tongue to destroy people. There is power, a strong power that is in the tongue. You need to be able to see something. You need to be able to control your tongue. The tongue is what moves the mouth to speak. Without the tongue, the mouth will not speak. The mouth will not talk. Please make sure that you're sharing the broadcast and you are engaging so that the broadcast will not go off. Because I am not using the LAN. I am using the Wi-Fi. Obi Ezenwa, God bless you. God bless you, Benjamin. So now, can we just take, for instance, when, to, when we are happy, the tongue is very powerful. The most powerful tool is the tongue. The next one is the eyes. The tongue is very powerful. You can use your tongue and destroy somebody in less than one second. You can also use your tongue and build somebody in one minute. Now we are going to talk about tongue and we are going to talk about anger. Those two things are going to come together. The power in the tongue and the devil behind anger. Somebody write down the topic for me. The power in the tongue and the devil behind hunger. The power in the tongue and the devil behind anger. Anger is the reason why you envy your brother and you envy your sister. But before we talk about the devil, the devil in anger, let's first talk about the power in the tongue. Take for instance, when you are very happy, I want to help some people because there are so many people that don't know what they do. When you are extremely happy, stay calm. Don't offer promises. Don't speak when you are extremely happy. Don't speak. And when you are extremely mad, don't speak. These are the two periods when a person should not talk. The power in the tongue and the evil in anger. That's what I want to speak about today. When you are extremely happy, learn not to talk. Learn not to speak. Learn not to make promises. Because you will see that the power that is in the tongue is very powerful. Sometimes you don't know what you use your tongue to say. And it comes against your own children in future. The power of tongue can destroy and it can make you. When you are exceedingly happy, learn not to say anything. And when you are mad, learn not to say anything. These are the two periods you should never speak. Because of the power that is in the tongue. So many instances, you're very happy. You make promises to people. You tell them, I will be with you. I will marry you. I will do this for you. I will go to the sky for you. If I die, I die with you. If I live, I live with you. You make these promises when you are happy. Right? You offer these promises. It is not you who is offering this. It is, it is not you who is offering this. But the moment is what is offering this. I am talking about the power that is in the tongue and the evil that is in anger. You will not understand when you are making these promises because you are extremely happy. You make promises. The promises you make in, in, in happiness, can you make that promises in anger? You cannot, right? So that is not who you are. The, the character you distribute when you are happy is not you. But the character you distribute when you are angry, that is the real you. Are you hearing me, people of God? Now, what you show to your children when you are happy, that is not the mother that you are. But what you show to your children when you are not happy, that is the real mother you are. That is the real father you are. That is the real auntie you are. 
That is the real friend you are. That is the real person that you are. Whatever you do in happiness for people does not count biblically. Because you are happy, that's why you're doing it. That is why the Bible did not say, pray for your brother who loves you. He says, pray for those who persecute you. Because God knows that this is, a, this is not a practice that people can do. He knows that it is a difficult practice that people cannot do. That is why he said, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who wrong you. Pray for those who hate you. So now, when you use the power that is in the tongue to say something good, to praise, to praise, to praise. Oh, this person is good. Just because they are happy with you, they are good. Just because they have done something good to you, they are good. What do you use your tongue to say about that person when you are mad? What do you use your tongue to tell somebody when you are mad? What do you use your tongue to confess when you are mad? That is who, make, that is who you are. I am not interested in people who stand with me because they are happy. I am interested in somebody who fights me but helps me. I am interested in somebody who hates me but still comes to the ministry because he or she knows that it's not coming to the ministry for me but coming to save God. I am more loyal to those who, who believes that I am not here because I need, I need to be here for the woman of God. No, I am here because I need to save God. I am more loyal to this kind of people. The power that is in the tongue. When you are happy with people, you use your tongue. You say something good and nice about them. You praise them. They are the best people. Oh, without them, life will be nothing. Oh, they are good. I've never seen a family like that. I've never seen couples like that. I've never seen siblings like that. I have never seen a woman like that. I have never seen a man like that. I have never seen a child like that. This child is just out of this world. This child is just extraordinary. This child is just a blessing from God. Welcome. It is good to praise people with that tongue. The power of the tongue. Now the same tongue you use in praising this man. Now the same tongue you use in praising this woman. Now the same tongue you use in praising your colleagues. Now the same tongue you use in praising your neighbor. Now the same tongue you use in praising your pastor. It is the same tongue that you are using now to curse people. It is the same tongue you are using now to destroy them. The same people you said they were so good to you, you have used your tongue to destroy them. What kind of a man are you? What kind of a woman are you? What kind of a child are you? What kind of a uncle are you? What kind of a person are you? The power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. The tongue is a very powerful tool. Without the tongue, the mouth cannot move. So be careful because this is the same tongue you use in eating. This is the same tongue you use in destroying. This is the same tongue you use in praising. This is the same tongue you use to worship. This is the same tongue you use to pray to God. Now when you destroy with this one tongue, you later use that same tongue to, to bless People are so shameless. My God. People are so shameless. Like, we live in a world whereby it is so easy to destroy somebody in a second. You have destroyed somebody. You don't care. You forget so easily about where you came from. About where you are. About your situation. About those who stood by you. About those who, 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 who held your hand. When you were nothing, when you were nobody, they did not look down on you. They did not forsake you. They did not uh, 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 jail you. They stood by you. And now you use the same tongue to destroy. You can imagine a marriage you have built for years. Relationship you have built for years. But because of the power in the tongue, it took you one second. One second of anger. How many muscles does it take to smile? And how many muscles does it take to be mad, to be angry? It is okay for you to be angry. But what do you say in your anger matters a lot, goes a long way. You use your tongue to destroy people. You use your tongue to set up people. You use your tongue to put down people. You use your tongue to humiliate people. You use your tongue to make sure that, you know what? Some of you, you want to be worshipped like God. Some of you, you want to take the place of God. Some of you, you don't want people to even, my God, what kind of creature are you? Who gave you the authority over somebody? Who made you the God over somebody? 
the power that is in the tongue you use that tongue and you destroy this person you use that tongue and you praise this woman i am going to share a true life story once upon a time in 2019 they lived a young guy who wanted to get married to a lady and as he as time went on he proposed to the lady and the lady answered his proposals and they went on planning everything as the marriage rights will be he met the family and after he had met the family i remember the the question was rose and one of the family members asked the man, he says, do you really know this lady very well that you want to marry? He says, wow, I know her very well. The family asked again, they say, do you know this lady that you want to get married to? Because before we collect things from you, we want to be sure that you know who you want. Video. They don't want to lose, want to lose the video. So my internet went off. Like I told you people, I say, you need to, you need to engage. Otherwise, we are going to lose the video. You need to engage. Otherwise, we will lose the video. I don't know what is going on, though. I need to call these guys again. Otherwise, tomorrow, we might not have relationship talk. This is the second time the internet is going off today. It went off before. It, oh, this is the third time, even. It went off before we, I restarted everything. It, it came back again. I went to check at the main source in the living room. It was red, too. I think I need to call those people because um, I don't know why it keeps disconnecting anyways. Okay, so let us continue. Please, if you, are, if you can hear me again, if you can hear me again, just uh, keep sharing the broadcast and putting it in. So the power in the tongue and the evil in anger. These are the two things that we are talking about today. So this guy went to the family and the family asked him this question. They said, do you know this girl that you want to get married to? The guy said, yes, he knows the girl. They asked him again, do you know the girl that you want to get married to? He responded, yes, that he knows the girl. The family consistently asked him again. I don't know why the parents of the girl kept asking this guy. You know, sometimes uh, you will bring a guy to the house. Your parents, because they... they uh, they are elderly like my mom my mom is on the very spiritual side anytime we have a visitor in the house if your friend comes to visit my mom will come to the room my mom will say be careful of this person my mom is that type she will not she will she's not mean to people she's very nice to people but you know mother and daughter talk right your mother will always come to the room and call your attention and say be careful so maybe the parents have seen such a thing and they decided to ask that guy the question do you know the person in charge that you're coming to marry very well the guy said yeah he knows he knows he knows they asked him again do you know this girl you're coming to marry he says yes he knows they said okay since you know the person you're coming to marry no problem go ahead and and and, and provide everything that you know that you want to do and then they will approve the marriage then they went ahead and they did the they did everything that was supposed to be done for the for the introduction and all of that. Please, if you haven't shared the brokers, go ahead and share the brokers. They went ahead and they shared everything that they needed to share. They did everything that they didn't they didn't they needed to do for the for the marriage to take place. And then the guy started running his mouth. The guy started finding faults. The guy started using the same mouth that he used in front of the girl's parents and was saying that, wow, this girl is the best. This girl is good. This girl is exceptional. This girl is wonderful. This girl is precious. This girl is God sent. He started using the same mouth to destroy the girl he was praising. And one day the mother went back and called his attention and says, do you remember when you when you came to marry this girl do you remember when you brought this girl to our family that we had told you if you know who you wanted to marry and you said yes the guy said yeah yeah that he can remember he said that he could remember please make sure you're sharing the brokers he said yes that he could remember and the mother said so why now are you complaining why now 
the same person that you said that you knew the same person you said that oh nothing nothing is happening you know everything so why are you now coming with different stories like everybody was shocked right and at the end of the day the marriage didn't work the marriage didn't work because the girl the the, the girl uh, the girl on her own could not just stand a man who will praise her today and tomorrow the man will do what he will do some of us we are like that the power that is in the tongue for us to praise a person we can praise a person right now we tell ourselves oh this is my boss stop i want to live with this person i want to die with this person i want to marry this person i want to be forever with this person and with a twinkle of an eye we use the same mouth and we start destroying the person. Now we have targeted the, the power that is in the tongue. Let us go to the evil in anger. Anger has destroyed a lot of lives. Anger has destroyed a lot of people. When you are very happy, don't say something. When you are very mad, don't say something. Quote me and write it some way. I say, when you are extremely happy, don't say anything. And when you are mad, when you are mad, slap yourself three times, you will be fine. When you slap yourself in anger and it pains you, Remember that when you open your mouth to say that thing to somebody that is going to pain the person. When you are happy, you start making promises to people. You start telling people good things about them because you are happy. You are living at the moment. You are living at the moment. You are not what you express in your happy moment. You are what you express when you are angry. It is so painful for people to lie against you. I hate when people lie against me. Like, I hate when people lie against me. Like, say what I didn't do. Naturally, you people know that I'm a very audible person, right? You see the way I talk. This is how I talk. I am very audible. I'm not the type who does, amen. Okay, did you carry the thing? I'm not that kind of a person. I'm a very audible person. I am a voice. When I sing, you know I'm singing. When I talk, you know that I'm talking. I'm a very, very audible person. Like when I undo the mic, you know that I'm audible. So, what pains me is when people lie on me. It hurts me. Not even if you can do anything you want to do, but don't lie on me. It hurts me when people lie on me. Like you telling me that I said this when I didn't say this. I did this when that's not what I did. Like for me, it is just a normal me. I said what I would have said behind you in front of you. And you tell me BS. It hurts me. Like that one is a no-no for me. But destroying people, getting mad, I am not the type who gets mad. I'm not the type who stays in hunger. I cannot get angry for one week. If I get angry with you for one week, it be, it's because you lied on me. And I deserve you to tell me I am sorry. If you don't tell me that, to hell with you. I hate when people lie against me. And I love it when you lie against me and I have a witness. That one is the sweetest. Because I am the type who will always go to somebody and say, look at this and tell me where I am wrong. Look at this and tell me what I did wrong. And I fear God. Like I always tell you people, I don't fear man. So if my conscience and the God that I'm saving doesn't tell me that what I am doing is wrong, I won't even mind you. I can ignore you for five years. Yes, I'm like that. I give you your way. I give you your space. The evil that is in anger. When we get happy, we make all the promises of this life. We make all the promises of this life. We make all the promises of this life because we are happy. Oh, woman of God, I will be giving, I will be sewing tight in your ministry. Woman of God, I will be supporting your ministry. 
Woman of God, I will buy your books. Woman of God, I will stand by you. I have people that made, that had covenants with me to save God with me for the rest of their lives. They made those covenants when they were happy. But they didn't know that one day their mind would change. But now you have come to change your mind. Can you go back to erase the moment that heaven wrote for you? Because whatever you offer, heaven writes it. There are people that is better for you. It is better for you not to make promises to people than for you to fail those promises. It is better for you not to give people your word than for you to fail in that word. Do you know the cost you have taken upon yourself in the Bible? You know, sometimes you just, you just pity people because most of the problem that people have today is as a result of their lifestyle. There is evil behind that hunger. When you are very, very happy, don't say something to people. When you are extremely mad, don't say anything to people. Sleep over it. When you wake up the next day and you are with your right senses, you can now speak. Whatever you don't say in anger, you will not regret it. But when you answer in anger, you will offend God and you will offend human beings. The words you offer when you are extremely happy. The power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. You use it to praise. You use it to destroy. You use it to promise. You use it to do evil. You are just so happy you make promises. When the anger comes, you take away the promises you made. How do you look at yourself? You don't see yourself like a fool. You don't see yourself like an idiot. You don't see yourself like a little child who has been beaten under the rain. And the person doesn't have an accommodation to go back to. He doesn't have family to go back to. Don't make promises when you are happy because you end up doing what? Some of you, you know that, oh, this man is, is, is always making promises when he's happy. And the only time you will ask your husband for something is when you are in bed with him. You ask a man when you are in bed with him, you ask him something. He will, of course, he will tell you that he will give you. The man is in bed with you. He's making love to you. You are asking him to buy you a, 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 a car. What do you expect him to say? Of course, he will tell you yes, that he will buy you the car. But when he finishes what he is doing, he will tell you that he didn't say it. He will change his mouth. He will deny it. Because as at that time, he's being controlled by something. At that time, emotionally, he is being controlled by something. He's not the one speaking. He's speaking through the emotions. He's speaking through what he's enjoying. So he will give you all the promises that you would, you, you, because that's what you're asking him. If he says no, you're going to stop, right? He doesn't want you to stop. So he will accept for you and say, yes, I will buy you the car. But when he finishes and now you come and you say, where is the car? He say, which car? You say, last night you promised me a car. How do you expect him with that time to give you the car? So people of God, when you are extremely happy, don't make promises. Don't say anything. And the same way, when you are mad and the devil from your father's side, the devil from your mother's side comes into your life, don't say anything. You see, what you don't know, what you don't understand, what you cannot see is that the devil knows where you will be promoted. The devil knows where your destiny lies. The devil knows where your future lies. The devil knows where your, 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 your glory lies. The devil knows who your destiny carrier, your angel, your breakthrough, your miracle, your parents, your neighbors, your if, if, all these people. Emotional inspirations. Yes. The devil knows all these things. He knows. So what would the devil do? The devil will use those moments to get at you, obviously. You saw me. I am looking for.
for documents. I don't have my documents. You have your documents. You have your papers. And I don't have my papers. And you come to me for a relationship. Why wouldn't I date you? Because I don't have my papers, right? I believe that if I date you, you will file documents for me and I will have my papers. So tell me why I will not be good to you. Tell me why I will not wash your pants. Tell me why I will not be, uh, uh, be obedient to you. Men will do anything for you. This is how you know the real person. People will, be, be, people will pay allegiance to you when they have nothing. But when they have everything, you will know the true color of a person. What you show when you have nothing is not you. What you show when you have something is you. So you, oh, mommy, I don't have document. They get, this guy wants to marry me. Of course, he will come and do everything for you because he needs the documents. If you are the one, what will you do? Let me ask you a question. Be honest to yourself. Sometimes we need to fear God and be honest. Just leave sentiment aside. Let me ask you this question. Answer it like you fear God. Don't answer it because you want to paint a picture of anything. Don't answer it because you're trying to pretend to be holier than thou. No. Just answer a very common question that comes from your heart. You don't have documents. A woman has documents. You don't have documents. The man has documents. And you are in a relationship. Will you go away to lose that document? You will not go away. You will stay there. Whether she's slapping you, whether she's insulting you, whether she's doing whatever, because you want documents, you will stay there. You will not care whether this man has four wives, whether he has 20 girlfriends, because you want these documents, you will stay there. Now, why is it that we are a slave to what we want, but we cannot be a slave to what, to what we do not want? And the moment you receive the documents, it doesn't take you even up to one year. For you to say, oh, this lady gave me these documents. Let me just wait. You get the document today. Tomorrow you divorce. You get the document today. Tomorrow you, 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 you leave the guy. You get the document today. Next tomorrow you are out of the city. Nobody knows where you are. It is wickedness upon wickedness. And that is why you see people bring what? Causes upon their lives. Somebody says, that's true. I am a witness. I am telling you true life story. Me, I'm not there in cooking story. So, me, I tell you true life. What is happening? True life. You do this thing, right? Put yourself in that. Yes. Put yourself in that. You don't have the patience. But you have been receiving insults. Every time my husband is insulting me. Every time my wife is insulting me. But you have been taking insults from your work. For 40 years, you are not tired of the insults from your work. You did not leave your job because they were insulting you. People of God, you know what? Examine yourself. I am talking about the evil anger in people. And I'm talking about the power in the tongue that can destroy in a second. Examine your life. Sometimes it's not about, you know what? God doesn't like me. God doesn't want to do this. God doesn't want to do that. No. You have the, the power to be a, your boss at work. You did not get mad and leave your job and say, you know what? I'm not coming to job again because I don't like the way you people talk to me. You wake up every morning, you smile. Even when your boss is saying you're stupid, you say, yes, sir. You're stupid. Yes, ma. You agree that you're stupid. Do you know that you're stupid? You say, yes, I'm away. But you cannot take that from your children, right? You can't take that from your husband. You can't take that from your wife. You can't take that from your pastor. Some of you, there are some messages that you go to church and you hear. You will not go to church again. You will say, hey, pastor is preaching about me. I have a daughter who called me one day. After my preaching, she called me one day and said, how come you are preaching about me? How come you are preaching about me? <laughs> how come you are preaching about me? And I told her, really, if I'm preaching about you, then he said that he said it's a wake up call for you to go and repent. So that I will not I will not preach about you again. So do you understand? But if they have a meeting in your office and your boss talks about people who are not responding to work, 
People who turn their reports in late, you can never go to work the next day and tell your boss, how come the meeting you had yesterday was about me? You cannot go to tell your boss that. But you can, you can do what? You can go to your pastor and say, Pastor, why are you talking about me? Why are you preaching about me? This is how you carry costs on your head. The other day, I was preaching about how people are ungrateful. How ungrateful people are. People tend to be very ungrateful. They don't remember who helped them when they were in need. They don't remember who was there for them when everybody else was not. They don't remember the glory, what God has done for them. They don't remember the steadfastness of God. I was talking about it. And I went further to talk about the, the Indian people who are sending pictures to my phone. And the videos that people are sending to my phone, they, they dig and everything that they have been sending to me. They send their manhood. They send the woman's private part to me. I was saying it on the live broadcast. I said, please, don't forward these things to me. I don't need these things. After the broadcast, one of my daughter messaged me and said, Mommy, if you want to block me, you can block me. If you want to remove me from your friend request, you can remove me. If you want to, to, to do this, you can do that. I looked at her. The evil anger in people is the reason why I am bringing back all these things. The evil anger in people is why I'm bringing all these things. And she messaged me. I, I read the message and I was like, wow. I was like, wow. This lady doesn't have respect. This lady doesn't have respect. This lady doesn't have the fear for a servant of God. Familiarity, right? This lady needs to be delivered. So when she said all of that to me, I told her, I said, you know what? That's, and, and, and aside of that, for the, past, for the past five years, for the past five years, she has been struggling in a relationship. Lack of respect. God bless you. For the past five years, she has been struggling in relationships. She cannot make it in a relationship. She's already old. Different man, different man, different children, different man, different children, different man, different children. No man can stay with a woman that is so angered. When you have a temperament, nobody can be with you. The women who carry their children and prefer to stay alone and suffer than to be with such a man. The man who carry his children and go than stay with such a woman. Somebody like me. I'm a very peaceful person. So if I see that you're going to bring me issues, I run away. Because I love my peace with God. I'm, I'm very, very peaceful. For those of you that have had the opportunity to live with me, one of them is Uche. Ask her. Um, um, Adama, Eji, those of you that have seen me shout, seen me angry, seen me happy, seen me, you can testify about what I'm saying. I'm a very peaceful person and I will not allow anything to steal my peace. I can let you go like this in order for me to have peace. I'm very peaceful. I can stay the whole day, you will not hear my voice, except you provoke me. And I'm not the type who talks slowly, right? All of you knows when I'm preaching, I preach with power. I am a woman of, of fire. I am a woman of fire. So that is why even when, even when the devil hears my voice, the devil runs because I don't have a gossip voice. A gossiper is the one who always does. When you see somebody who talks like that, that is a gossiper. Anytime you see somebody who is audible, the person is a very person, is somebody that is free of mind. This lady, I read the message, I was like, wow. Wow. Really? I was like, wow. Really? <laughs> wow. I'm the type that will rebuke you. And when I finish rebuking you, I am done. So when she did that, I was like, wow. 
Really? The message taught you. It is a call for you to repent. You need to, like, you, you need to, you need, you need to, you know, sometimes, sometimes we forget. We forget easily. And God hates people like that. God hates people who forget so easily. How can you forget your tomorrow when you had no job? How can you forget your tomorrow when you were suffering? How can you forget your tomorrow when you were sick and you were in the hospital? How can you forget your tomorrow when you had no food to eat? How can you forget your tomorrow when the people that you were born with, you have all died? People, a lot of people died through COVID-19. Do you know why God saved your life? How can you forget so easily? When the Bible says that you should remember the Lord thy God, we forget easily. When we get mad, when we get angry, we forget about all the good things of this person. We forget about all the good deeds of this person. We forget about all the help of this person. We allow the devil to possess us in that anger, that time, that time, that time. That is why you see a lot of people go and kill and then they regret. Somebody say, Mommy, thank you for this wonderful message. It's like you're talking to me. It's the Holy Spirit, or not me. It's the Holy Spirit, not me. Let me tell you people something. I always like to use myself when I'm preaching. I always like to use myself when I'm preaching. Because I'm a very peaceful person. I am not actually looking for a man who is really, 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 really rich. I'm not really looking for a man who is, um, but I'm looking for a man who has a good attitude. Attitude for me is everything. Do you know what is attitude? Like the Bible scripture that I showed to you people yesterday. It is your attitude, your character that brings hope. If you have, if you have hope, if you have a good character, there is hope that tomorrow will be better. But if you have a bad character, there is no hope for tomorrow. Because the person who has a bad character does not think when the devil comes over them. The person who has a bad character does not think when they are mad. There is something that my mother taught us whilst we were growing up. My mother said, don't you speak when you are mad. My mother says, don't speak when you are mad. Just go, and, just go to bed and lie down and sleep. Sleep it over. If you wake up and you feel the same way, then you speak. But when you are mad, learn to control yourself. I love those men who knows how to control their emotion. Because they will save their marriage. But a man who doesn't know how to control his emotion, he will destroy his marriage in the twinkle of an eye. And for how long will you continue to move from woman to woman? From man to man? How long will you continue? There is time for everything. Sometimes you need to swallow the BS and tell yourself, I am the shit. Sometimes you need to look at yourself and say, I am the shit. Yes, another person says, my grandmother says, count to 10. Yes. Whatever you know that works for you. Some people, you just make a call. Some people, you just make a call. Like yesterday, I was very, very mad. And a certain man called me. His English is not very good. But at least I understand when he calls. And I was wondering why he called me at that time. You know, sometimes God puts people in your life to just be a stress relief for you. I was so mad. And this man called me. If he has called me with a number that I knew, I will not pick up the call because I know what he wants to say. He called me with a number that I don't know the number. I picked the number and he started talking to me. He started talking to me, you know. He was preaching the word of God to me. He was telling me about the Bible, telling me about the kind of person that I am, telling me that because I went to his house and I actually told him something. And it wasn't up to how many days it wasn't even up to two weeks after I told him what I told him. His father died. He lost his father. And he was like, wow, you came here, you opened the scripture. And you went, and the God talked about death. And I shared it with you. And now my father is late. So he was just telling me, it was like, you know what? You are a different person. 
I've tested you in so many ways. I know that God is using you. I know that you have the power of God. Please, when you are mad, don't talk to people. Don't say any bad thing. Don't do this. Don't do that. I, I couldn't even remember the Bible scripture because when I went there, I told him, do you have a French Bible? He said, yes. I said, bring it. He brought the Bible in French. He brought it in English. And I just told him what to do. Open it. And God spoke. I didn't even know that the death that God was speaking about was going to be his father. I didn't even know, but this is just what God allowed me to do in that house. I did that. And I also used him and did something for myself to know what God is saying concerning my ministry. And that yesterday, in the midst of that anger, I hate to be light on. If you tell me something and it's what I'm doing, fine, I will not even care. But when you lie on me, it hurts me. I hate when people lie on me. You say I did this and that's not what I did. So I wasn't happy, but after I spoke to that man yesterday, after he spoke to me yesterday, I was very okay. I was very fine. I just let everything go. So people of God, be very careful what you alter from your mouth when you are happy and what you alter out of your mouth when you are not happy. There are people that God has anointed from their mother's womb and he has kept them. And when you put a hand on them, you will suffer all the days of your life. And you will not understand why you are suffering. And there are people that God has anointed. And when you have an encounter with them, your whole destiny changes. That is why some of you will come here today and you will say, Oh, I celebrate grace. Mommy, thank you so much. It is not me. God is just using me. Because I have released myself for God to use me. So God is using me. God is using me. So be very careful that what I do for you is to pray for you, not to get mad. My anger is very bad. Sometimes I would say, I will, I will not voice it out. But deep inside me, you have limited me. God uses me. There is no doubt about that. I'm sure when some people are not with me, they think I'm using some powers, some mystic powers, some things like that. They know, they think that, I, oh, maybe I'm doing some extraordinary things. No. Dauche, she has stayed with me. She has been at my house. Ask her, what does mommy do in the morning when she wake up? What does mommy, like, there is nothing I hide. My life is very open. I have the raw power of God. Ask her on Wednesdays, on Wednesday service. Sometimes she gets me really mad on Wednesdays before I go to church. She can be very pissing. But when it's time for service, I just go to church and God, ask her, like studying the Bible, I don't do it. Aside of reading my Bible in the morning, like I have service now to go, and I sit down and I and I and I, I sit down and I open the Bible and study to go and preach on Wednesday morning. No. Somebody says, I can just look at you and see the power of God in your life. Ask her. I'm not lying when I say these things to you people. I don't practice it before I go on the altar. Sit down and think of what I will say. No. Even here where I am living, people cannot testify to it. I don't practice what I'm going to say. I just shower and come live and the Holy Spirit will use me. I don't, I don't carry a book, sit down and write and memorize what I'm coming to say. No. I have a different calling. I have a raw grace. I have a dangerous grace. I have a very dangerous grace. A very dangerous grace is what I carry. I don't practice like they say, oh, you are going to the U.S. to do this, to do that. When I went to New Jersey to do a program, a lady came for the program. And as she was coming for the program, you know what she did? As she was coming for the program, she carried her own, uh, her own prophetess and came for the program. And when the person that she brought to the program came, the person is a, 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 a psychist. 
The person is a psychist. When they arrive at the program, the person stood there as if she came for the program as well. And I was looking at them and I was laughing. Where I was standing in front, the Holy Spirit directed me to go to them. I went to them and I held her and I looked at her. As soon as she saw me, she knew that this lady is of God. Do you know that the next thing I went to the front to come back to her, she has left the church. And the next day she came. My daughter who invited her was shocked. My daughter has never told me anything. Mommy name did not tell me anything about this lady. I brought her out in the church. God did not only speak about her. God spoke about her husband in, in Nigeria. She was shocked. The whole church scattered. I am talking about, I am talking about, I am talking about what today? You don't understand. There are people that God has called. I followed my daughter to a funeral. The man, they say, whoa, 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 whoa. The man, they say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody in the village is afraid of him. When the man saw me, the man called me. He held my hand and he saw that there was fire. I was not even afraid that he touched me. He took my hand and took me somewhere. And told me that, please, will I be with her until she goes back? He was trying to make a relationship because he knows that if he does not do that, it's not going to happen. He rather came to make peace with me so that he will be able to hear something about my daughter. I was laughing at him. I entered the place. I don't need to do anything. Just being in that place, the devil cannot penetrate. There are people that God has called. It is not about the name. Forget about the name. It, there are people that God has anointed from their mother's womb. Do you know when I realized that I had the call of God? In 1990. 1990. My mother took me to a man. A certain man. And the man says that if your daughter does not get into ministry before the age of 29. She will run mad. If your daughter does not get in ministry at the age of 29 years and start saving God, she will go mad. 1990, that was when our last born, maybe our last born was born. God showed it to that guy. And he told my mom, and that is why when all those uh, when all those tubes and paralyzed leg started coming, I, 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 I wasn't surprised because I was told that if I don't do the work of God before I get to 29 years, that my what? That my myself I will not be. I started prophesying. Do you know at what age I started prophesying? When prophes when you can imagine a little child who prophesies, how can you lie as a little child? That is why in this ministry, when God is prophesying, God will call names. God will call your village. God will call something for you to know that he's the one speaking. How many times I even followed my daughter and I went to see a, a, a prophet, a strong prophet, a spiritualist as well. That man is not even a, a prophet of God. That man is a spiritualist. You know who a spiritualist is? A spiritualist is somebody that does anything right and everything. He can call ghosts. That's if he, if he can call the ghost. Room. But that's what he says, right? He can call ghosts. He can do so many things like that. Treats people's sicknesses and all. When the man saw me, the day I went there, the man was mad. He says, why, you, why did you come here? I said, ah. Me, I came for you to give me prophecy and you are mad at me. He was mad. He said, you, you, you are very strong. You, you are very strong. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You are very strong. And I was laughing because I didn't tell him anything. And when we finished, I asked my daughter, I said, did you tell this man anything? He said, no, she didn't tell the man anything. The man said, there is something in you. He said, there is something inside of you. You, you, there is something in you. After 
they, 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 everything. Oh, it came. He said, there is something in you. There is something in you. I was like, what is it? It was mad that I came to try power. But God, he never knows that I did not go to try power. I went there to find out something. That was when the arm, arm, uh, arm robbers entered the house to carry my things, right? So I wanted to know who carried the thing because everybody says that the person that carried the thing is not outside, it's inside the house. So I just wanted to know. And we got there, the man was like, what are you doing here? There is something in you. You, there is something in you. There is something in you. He kept saying there's something in you and he was mad. He said, don't behave like that. Don't do what you are doing again. Don't do what you're doing next time. You came to try me. I said, no. No, I did not come to try you. I came here because I have a problem. The man did not want to believe me. He did not want to believe me. Since God has been using me to prophesy, I have never lied about prophecy. I have never, because I know somebody's problem, I use that one to prophesy. Never. My daughter, I was telling you people a testimony the other day. Mommy name was having an issue with a certain man. And they were texting back and front, back and front, back and front, back and front with this man. And when she told me about it, I just laughed at her. I told her, where do you pay your tight? Sometimes tight is very powerful. Your tight is very powerful. Your tight is like a bullet. If you don't know the meaning of tighting, child of God, if you're a tighter, use your tight to fight your battles. If you are a tighter, you don't need to go to people to pray for you. Use it as a weapon of warfare to your enemies. You will see the power right there. Without the power of no prophecy. Titan is very powerful. And I told her, go to your place of titan. Tell them about this man. Let them tie him to your titan. She said, Momsi, uh, I haven't paid in three, weeks, in three months or thereabouts. I told her, go and pay your tight. When you finish paying your tight, give me the man's name. She paid her tight. She sent the man's name. I just wrote it and dropped it on the altar. You don't know the power of tithing. I wrote it. I said, Father, you say you will rebuke the devourer, right? This lady has paid her tight. This is a devourer who wants to steal from her, who wants to steal her peace, who wants to take from her, who wants to bring war to her life. You say you will rebuke the devourer. Rebuke this devourer. I wrote the name, drop it on the altar. Let us see. Who has the strongest power? God or man? People of God. People of God. Today I came to tell you something about the power that is in the tongue. The power that is in the tongue. There is power in the tongue. Power to revive. Power to restore. Power to destroy in the tongue. And the devil behind anger. Those of you that left the ministry, do you think it is your place for you to have left the ministry? No. The devil know that if you stay in heaven chapel, that you will be free. The devil knows that if you are with the first lady of God, your life will be heavenly. So the devil will look for a way to say, how can I take this one? Do you know that in my house in the village, once I enter the house, the territory is a different thing. Witches and wizards cannot come to my house when I'm there. But when I'm not around, my father will be telling me that cats, cats are coming. Some cats are coming. Some ducks are coming. Some this are happening. Some that are happening. But when I am there, nothing. Ask my daughter. She's afraid to go out at 12 midnight. Sometimes when I'm doing the midnight prayer, I see the spirit passing by my house. I tell her there is a strange spirit. I open the door, I go and meet them. And I talk to the spirit. I say, what are you doing here? I open the door, I go to meet the spirit outside. I say, where are you people going? Is this a passage? Why are you passing here? Is this a passage? <laughs> oh my God. You don't understand. Those who know what they are doing, they don't make noise. They don't have the name. 
Those who don't know what they are doing, they, they have the name. So the name speaks for them, not their deeds. I said sometimes at 12 midnight, when we are doing the midnight prayer, or before we, we start the midnight prayer, as soon as there is a strange power, I feel it. I just tell you there is a, there is a, a strange power. They have come. I'll go outside and meet them. Sometimes they will tell me that they are just passing. I will tell them, is this a passage? Sometimes I will remove water. I will go and pour it out. Sometimes I will put salt inside water, destroy it, and say, if you match here again, unless you have not eaten salt, you will never be able to, get, to go back. You will stay there till they catch you the next morning. Spirits will come. They will walk past. She will tell me this, this, this. When we came to the house newly, there was a bed that always come there to do fip, 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 fip. I just prayed and did the water outside. Did you hear the bed again in the house before we left Tuche? Did you see those beds again? They don't burn them well. There are people that God has given power. I know the tongue that God gave me. So I rather use my tongue to pray and bless. They didn't come again. They bet. They went like that. But they were always frying. From our village, they'll come and be monitoring. I told her there is a monitoring bed that is associated to you. They want the bed to check where you are and know what you are doing. And at the moment I saw that bed, I disconnected the bed from her. I said, no, the bed cannot continue to be here. The bed cannot continue to be here. I disconnected the bed. I disconnected it. And I'm telling you, there is power. If you can leave anger out of your life, you are so angered that you would see the message of your pastor as a threat. You would say, <laughs> you know what? Me, God has given me a, God has kept me a voice in my family. There is no decision that can be done in my family without me today. There is nothing that wants to be done in my father's house that they will not need me. What is your grace? The power to speak and it comes to pass shows that the kingdom of God is not just in the preaching of the word but by the demonstration of God's power. The kingdom of God is not just merely by preaching the word of God but by demonstration of God's power. You demonstrate the power of God. Look at Herbert, my son. I was telling you people the other day. He did not even know the village of his wife, where the wife came from. He didn't know. But the Holy Spirit knew it and mentioned it. The Holy Spirit mentioned it. I'm not saying arrange prophecy. We don't arrange prophecy in this ministry. I don't even need to know you. That is why some of you, when you message me, you see that I don't reply you. I tell you to join the broadcast. Join the broadcast. If I see that you are saving God, you have given me a responsibility to care for you, to wait for you. But I see that you people are just gold diggers. You come for God to do it for you, then you go. You come for God to do it for you, then you go. I am not interested in such people. And I am looking for sons and daughters. Who will stand and save God with me? And God will do what? God will open their hearts. I saw some useless guys like that who don't know what they are looking for. They want a woman of God, but they are not ready to save God. How can you want a woman of God and you don't want to save God? You want a woman of God, but you don't want to save God. How possible is that? That I will be with you and you don't want to save God. You will call me on the phone and talk to me, but you don't share my video. You want to marry me, but you do not support me. 
your mama, your grandmother, not this beautiful woman of God. Not me. The way to my heart is through the Lord. If you want to be with me, you need to save God. You need to save God. You cannot want to marry. You want to marry me and you don't want to save God. Are you kidding me? Marry your mother. Marry your aunties. You want to marry me, but you don't want to save God. You want to marry me. You don't want to share my video. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. How do you want to marry me? Did I complain? I am so happy as a single lady. I'm so happy. I am so, so happy. As I am, I am so happy. God has given me spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. I am contented. There are people that have children. They don't even know their children. They don't even know their children. I am the mother of Israel. If I die today, all of you will bury me. There is no way in the Bible that says that you need to marry to go to heaven. There is no way in the Bible that says that without marriage, you will not make heaven. So marriage is actually a distraction. Mar marriage is actually a distraction. So if I cannot find a man that wants to save God with me, why do I need to marry? Tell me why I need to marry. I am not a sex person. So I'm not looking for sex. That's not what I'm looking for. You are not doing me a favor to marry me. I am doing you a favor to be your wife. If I am looking for sex, I can get sex anyway. But that's not the life I, 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 God has called me to live. Do you know where my power is from? Do you know where my power is from? You don't know. One day I'll tell you people the source of my power. You are asking me to marry you, but you cannot save God with me. Every day, proposals of marriage. And I go to your profile and I check. I see that you don't share my video. And you come on my page and be talking nonsense about marriage. Marriage is not happiness. So there are people that are in marriage right now. They are miserable. As the matter of fact, instead of you to be a first wife to a useless man, be a second wife to a good man. Listen to me. Hear me very well. Oh. Hear me very well so that you will say this one is from my woman of God. Hear me very well. And those of you, those of you, you will forsake your God just to be with a woman. You will forsake your God just to be with a man. You are an idiot. Because they will leave you. They will leave you. They will leave you. Human beings are so horrible. Human beings are so... They think that they are smart, but they are stupid. You come here, woman of God, do this, do that, do that. You submit to my grace because you want me to help you. And I pray for you morning, afternoon, and night. I don't sleep. I wake up, intercede on your behalf for God to do something for you, for God to help you, for God to deliver you. I pray, 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 pray until God tells me, my daughter, don't pray again, it is done. Do you know that there are, there are sometimes you're praying for people. God tells you, this one, I have done it. The source of my power is holiness. The source of my power is holiness. Holiness. The source of my power is holiness. Without in which holiness, no man will see God. The source of my power is holiness. I am not like your regular woman of God who goes for a meeting and sleep around in the conference. No. Ask around. Take my name. Post it. I am not here to deceive anybody, but I am here to tell you the truth the way it is. This is where my power is from. The source of my power. Holiness.
purity, dedication. I don't fornicate around. I don't sleep around. This is my power. So if you can dedicate yourself to God, make your body God's temple and see whether your prayers will not be powerful. Whether you will not pray to God today and in the evening, God will give you results. Because you live a holy life. You see that there is kissing in the Bible. There is romance in the Bible. You will see God, Godling and all of that. But the word fornication, that man getting into you, that is the sin. So when you're looking for power, go and practice what the woman of God told you. The source of my power. The source of my power. Somebody asked me the other day, woman of God, do you kiss? <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, Woman of God, do you kiss? I love thy. I love Thaya. Kissing is not something I like. Naturally, I'm not a kiss kiss person. So for me to kiss you, you need to be really neat. Your mouth needs to smell like your, your mouth needs to smell good. My children in the in the conferences, they have the opportunity to kiss me, right? Sometimes you guys kiss me, right? You kiss kiss. You ug ug. When I go for conferences, I kiss my children. I'm not a kiss kiss kind of a person. Somebody asked me, woman of God, do you kiss? You need to really smell good for me to kiss you. It's not me. Like, I'm not, you will be frustrated with me. <laughs> you will think that you're coming to enjoy whatever you, you call enjoyment. That thing you call enjoyment is not me. You will be so frustrated with me. Because... I have given it all up for God. It's not even moving me. Oh. It's only one thing that moves me. Just one thing. Just one thing. But that's not what I came to speak about today. Today I came to talk about the power that is in the tongue. This is your tongue. This is your tongue carries power. This is your tongue carries fire. This is your tongue carries grace. This is your tongue can build. This is your tongue can destroy. People of God, tame your tongue. Go back home and tame your tongue. Go back home and talk less. Go back home and put a padlock on your mouth. I came to speak about the power that is in the tongue. And the evil anger. And the evil that is in, the, in anger. You will be there enjoying your life. Before you know the devil will use you. Pack them. You will pack your loads. Leave your husband. Do you think that there is any way that is better? Everybody is managing. If you run from Africa to come to U.S. Because rain is falling in Africa. Sweetheart. When you get to U.S. You will meet rain. Because it rains everywhere. You leave U.S. and come to Canada so that you will not be able to experience rain. You will meet rain in Canada because it rains everywhere. Leaving your marriage because your wife insulted you or your husband is not doing the, the, uh, is not uh, talking to you the way you deserve to be talked to. You are an idiot because it's like leaving Africa because the sun is too much and the rain is too much. It rains everywhere. The sun shines everywhere. So shut up your mouth, sit down, and allow other people to have peace so that you can have peace. Tame your mouth. When you destroy people with your mouth, remember that when they hear your destruction, they will destroy you in two. People have mouth to destroy. You're not the only one who knows how to use your mouth to destroy. When I hear that you say, I am stupid, I will tell the person that brought the message that you are more of an idiot. Now you see that anger has taken place, right? You say, I'm stupid. I say, you are an idiot. Before you know it, we keep going like that. Before you know it, we will get into our marriages and we will start exposing ourselves. Before you know it, we will get deeper and it will be exposed that your husband sleeps with me. I sleep with your husband. Your children are not your children. Tame your tongue, people. Tame your tongue. The power to destroy is in the tongue. The power to make is in the tongue. 
The power to build is in the tongue. The power to do what? To put fire is in the tongue. Tame your tongues. Even if you see something. Even if you see something, they ask you, did you see it? Tell them not clearly. Tell them not clearly. <laughs> You will come and ask me, woman of God, did you? Since I was born, I was telling somebody, I said, I me, even if I see something, I will not talk. There are some people that they will talk about everything.